Hello, you're listening to the broadcast from the New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We're located on Highway 411, just three buildings from the intersection of Highways 411 and 95. Our email address is simply our initials, followed by the word mailbox at gmail.com, which is nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. We meet Sundays for teaching at 10 a.m., followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. Brother Marcus Severance is a pastor. Now, let's listen in to the message. Will you stretch your hands this way? Father God, I'm at your mercy. Lord, these people love you so much, they wouldn't have come out here on Wednesday night if they didn't. Thank you, Josh. God, we love you. Lord, you have the word tonight. You have the word for all of us, and I thank you so much for it. Lord, I ask you for your peace to fall upon your people. God, I pray right now they'd just be able to take it. Just take a deep breath, everybody in here. God, just let them breathe in. God, let them breathe you in. Just give them peace tonight. Now, God, we ask you now to bless this word, to anoint this word. And God, we ask you, Father, that it would encourage and strengthen your people tonight. And the people of God said, Amen and Amen. You may be seated. I want I want to share something before I go into the scripture. There's been a word that, and I want us all to say it together. There's been a word. Now, I've never preached like this before, and and I've never really just said things like this before ever in 26 years of ministry. But there's a word that he has given me. And I feel compelled by the Spirit of God To say, I mean, I'm going to give account before God for every word I, I speak anyway, but to say that I think that this is the word in this season more than any word tonight that I've ever preached, even more than repentance, which I believe we've all repented. God gave me this one word, and the word He told me to tell the church was awake. He said to tell the body of Christ, this word is from from the Lord. He said, tell them to awake. Now I want to share something. The other day, um, I had to get up real early in the morning. And I didn't really want to get up early in the morning because, you know, I like to sleep in on Saturdays, but but God was, was, was going to use this as he began to deal with me about this message, there's, there's two parts. I'm only going to be able to preach the one part tonight. But there's, there's, there's two parts, and I'll finish it up. There's no way I can do it tonight. But, but listen, so I got up at 5.30 in the morning because I had to be somewhere. If I did, if I did, I, I, not, not only did I have to be somewhere, but I had to take my son somewhere. He had to be there. But I had to get up early in order for us to go where we needed to get to. Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, God is saying the same thing to us tonight. That we need to awake because we're getting ready to go somewhere. We're getting ready to go. Come on, somebody. We're getting ready to go to a place. And unless we're awake, then we'll never reach that place. We'll never be able to get to that destination. We'll miss the timing. We'll miss the ride, as I say, and we'll never make it to that destination. I didn't like getting up at 5.30 in the morning. Our flesh doesn't like doing some of the things that we might have to do. But you know what? But God is telling us tonight through this scripture, and this is what I want to read, that it's time to awake. Now, Bill, you sung about the, really about a garment. And then the song tonight was about awake, awake, because I told my wife to sing it, though. I will say that. But even so... This is what God is speaking, and this is the Scripture. Isaiah 52, listen. He says it twice. He said, Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. He said, For henceforth thou shalt no more come unto the uncircumcised and unclean. Here it is. Shake thyself from the dust. I thought about your message about that that fish, Josh. Shake thyself from the dust and sit down on Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. So tonight I want to talk 
I'm not going to keep you here alone. These things about what is it that will cause you and I to awake? What is it that will cause you and I to awake out of our slumber? Now listen, if you want me to go even deeper in this message, I will for just a minute, but I, I'm going to talk to us tonight what God will allow to come into our life. He, if, if we want it in our life, if we seek after it, here's what he said the first time he was tempted ever in his life, ever by the devil in, in the wilderness. And Joel, you've already said it. God said this is the key, the first thing that's going to make us awake. Listen to me. God talked about putting on garments. God talked about earlier about the garment. Remember I preached about Joshua. I'm not going that way. Now I'm talking about the garment's on. He said the garment's on. The strength is on now. But he's saying to us twice, awake, awake. Number one, he told the devil, first thing that he said, he said, when you get these stones, he said, you can turn them into bread. Jesus said, man, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost, shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So the first thing that's going to cause us to wake up is the word. The word is preached. Now here's what happens. There was only one out of four people that Jesus was preaching. Not me, not T.D. Jakes, not, not, not some of these incredible, not Josh Shedd, not, not some of these people that can blister the... But it was Jesus himself, the Word of God, the most anointed preacher that ever lived, ever walked the planet, and only one out of four were seen. In other words, there was only one of them that woke up. There was only one of them that, that, that got out of their slumber. But God told us tonight... He said the Word is what's going to wake us up. The Word is the first and most important thing. That's why he said that to the devil. He said, you know what? If I eat bread, I might go to sleep. He said, I'm not going to go to sleep. You know, he hadn't eaten in 40 days. And I want to tell you what, I've, I've done that. I've fasted for many days before. And the minute I ate, you know what I did? I went to sleep. You know what Jesus was saying? You don't need the things of this world. You don't, you don't need something that's going to fill your belly and that's going to just come out of you. You know, it's going to fill your belly for a minute, but God says, no, you and I need the Word of God. That's what's going to cause us, hallelujah, to awake. I feel the Holy Ghost. It's going to be God's Word that He said, and it doesn't proceed out of man's mouth. Even though man preaches it, it's God's Word. Jesus said, let me tell you something, devil. I whipped you in heaven. I whipped you on earth. I'm going to whip you at the cross. I'm going to go down in hell. I'm going to whip you again. And how am I going to whip you? I'm going to whip you with the Word of God. I'm going to whip you now. I'm going to whip you later. And when I come back, the first thing he said, Brother Gary, when you got up here tonight, God said, do it now. The Word of God said, do it now. Don't wait. we got to do it now. And when we do it, when he tells us, everything will go fine. When he comes back, he's going to whoop the devil. I want to talk about whooping the devil, if I like that word. With that big old stick. Y'all wish you had that shirt on tonight. But, but with a big old stick. Well, you know what? He said when he comes back, he said he's going to destroy him, remember, with a sword out of his mouth and with the brightness of his coming. He's going to chop him up, man. The devil is going to be thrown down into a pit for a thousand years. Praise God. But God is telling us now that we are to awake. What's going to wake us up? The Word. The Word is going to keep us awake. I'll die without the Word. I'll be asleep without the Word. I'll slumber without the Word. Because if I'm going to get a little bit deeper. When the ten virgins woke up, the, the cry was made, the Word come forth, and it said, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, and you better rise up and be ready to go. Or in other words, the Word of God better be in your heart. Your lamps better be trimmed and burning. Because when God comes and we don't know, you better be awake. He's telling us that's the Word. Put on His strength. Put on His strength. Where does the strength of the Lord come from? Number one, two things. Number one, it comes from the Word. God said it's impossible to please me without faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Faith is that manna from heaven. Faith is that bread that God was talking about. Faith is what's going to wake you up. There's something else too. The joy of the Lord, hallelujah, is our strength. Amen. And we need to have God's joy. That's why God said put on thy strength. Put on thy beautiful garments. You know why He said put on thy beautiful garments? Because He said 
put on the garments of praise or for the spirit of heaviness. You got to put on the beautiful garment. Let the praise go up. Let the worship go up and watch the devil flee and you'll begin to feel the strength, hallelujah, and the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's why God said, put on my beautiful garment. God said, when you worship me, I'm beautiful in your life. I'm beautiful for situation. I can take care of anything in your life. God said, awake to you tonight. God said, awake to me tonight. Tell my church that my word tonight from my heart to you is awake. Remember what they said when they got up. Now this is my message, so I'm going to preach it this way because this is what's in my heart. Now listen, when they all got up, all of them got up, all ten of them, the virgins got up. I wasn't going to go this way, but he, he put it on my heart. They all got up. They all rose up together. But all of a sudden, there were some of them, and that's why I'm telling you, man, you can't depend upon man You've got to go to God. Listen to this prayer. You, you've got to wake up. And, and that's why God is saying to us tonight, what is it that's going to wake you up? My word is going to wake you up. Am I only one? No. I'm not the only one that should have a word. I'm not the only one. I'm not just because I stand in this pulpit has absolutely, well, you're a preacher. Yeah, okay, that's fair. That's fair enough. But even so, but I'm not the only one that should have a word. But when they all got up, and I thought about this, when they all got up, some of them began to say, you know what, I, uh, can, I, can, I, uh, can, can I have some of your oil? Can I have some of what you got? And they didn't say yes. They said no. And you want me to tell you what I believe what a lot of that means? Number one, it means that these are the people that were awake. These were the ones that God's speaking about now, that the Word of God, somebody said something tonight, that, that Jewel said it, that they hunger after everything else, but their lamps are not full. They don't have extra... They're not, they, not, you know, let me tell you what, what's really the real problem is, if you really, if you study that out, let me tell you what it really was, when they said the other ones had extra, their lamps weren't full. They needed that extra oil, but they couldn't get it. Because the wise who were really wise said, we're not going to give it to you. Matter of fact, in other words, you can't get it. You're going to have to go seek it. You're going to have to go find it, buy it for yourself. You're going, you know, have you ever seen oil, the real oil, when it was pressed from those grapes, how hard it really is? They get in them, that grape press, they do their feet. You ever seen that from the old covenant? It's hard work. It wasn't something that was easy. If it's easy, everybody be doing it. The church house will be full. Everybody be glorifying God. Where is everybody? I tell you where they are. Their, their lamps aren't full. Their lamps will be empty on that day. And they'll say, give us of your oil. And we've been here day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, worshiping and praising and looking for God and waiting for another word and, and, and following God. Come on, somebody, with all of our heart. But the other ones say, hey, but when it's time to go, give me a watch you got. And they're not going to be ready. I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about. God's telling us now awake Amen. what causes us to awake what would cause us to awake out of our sleep let me just start number one a shaking would a shaking will cause us to awake now, now Jesse let's just imagine that you're asleep go ahead and close your eyes here and Jesse's up here and he's snoring now I'm not going to slap him in the face I don't think if somebody thought that you're a slapping preacher no I'm not going to slap him he's asleep that's pretty good I'm not Maybe I should shave his, you know, shave him here. Oh. But no, you're not going to do that. Well, I'm making a point. You're not going to wake them up by slapping them because you might get in trouble. They might, they might slap you back. But what you're going to do is you're going to grab them and you're going to shake them. And they're going to wake up. And there's a shaking going on. People say, how do you know that? How? It's happening now. God is shaking people. He said judgment would begin first at us. Us, 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 us right here. Judgment will first begin at the house of God. The Word is shaking us. The Word is getting us out of our junk and getting us ready. Can I preach a little bit? The Word of God is waking us up. God said every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God is shaking my church. And they know what's coming. God said, God said through Paul, people say, well, you know, preacher, we don't know when he's coming. It, it'll come upon us like a thief in the night. I said, it might you. I've said that, but it might you. 
And I quoted what Paul said. Paul said, we're not of the night. I'm not asleep. I'm awake. And God said, I, he said, you tell him. He said, that's the first day. And he said, I'll shake them out of their sleep. Amen. Some aren't even asleep. Some are just slumbering. There's a difference between the two. But God's going to shake them. God's shaking the church. God's shaking people. He's using His Word. 